We're back on shift inside the ambulance. Hello, Black Country! Hey! We're back! Go, 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 go. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Oh. We're watching your belly's a pain. Does it look bad to you? As they face more heart-pounding action... I can't have a chest for me. Clear! Everyone, Everyone clear! clear. And more medical emergencies. Alright. Okay, we've got some good respiratory effort now. Battling over 4,000 calls each day. I can't help you. Don't cry, darling. I've had enough, you know. Look at that! <coughs> there are some new faces. <laughs> Can I wear the team chains? Pretty please. And some old friends. I love you, John Stevens. No, you don't. Yes, I do. My life has been positively dead without you. Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Can we come in and have a chat? No. Have you got a favourite teddy you want to take with you? I'm going to need to shave you. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. <laughs> we'll need to call security for these pair. They've been nothing but trouble. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance oh. crews as we take you inside the ambulance. Look, they go. Into the wild blue yonder. Again, that frog. Bonjour. Je mm -hmm. suis lemon. Excusez-moi, mon petit frère, très bien. Oh, you are. Excusez-moi, my little cauliflower. In French. Excuse me, my little cauliflower. Yeah, yeah. mon petit chou fleur. <laughs> I'm sure your pronunciation is not. I'm too right. like I'm not posh enough. I'm not French enough. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not going to get me doing a French accent. I'm not not paid enough to put on accents for this job as well. <laughs> it's a cold early spring afternoon. And crewmates Jamie Busby and Ollie Raven have received an urgent call to a school. So we are going to a six-year-old female who's struggling to breathe. Throat tightness, dip, chromosome 8 depletion, history of narrowing airways. Oh God. Their young patient has a rare chromosome abnormality that can affect many parts of the body. Oh, this is icy. Look at this. It's horrible. For an hour, I can feel the truck going. I mean, there's lots of people waiting for us. Right, we'll grab kit. We make haste. School staff called the ambulance when their six-year-old pupil began struggling to breathe. The patient's mum, Keela, rushed into school when she heard. Hello there. Hello. And what's your name, darling? <coughs> Maya. Maya. And what's going on today? Look, she's got creep at school. She's got narrowing of the airway, so she normally goes down the old creek. You're barking like a dog. You're getting a rough. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Do you say she's already been diagnosed with crew? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Well, bless you. I'll tell you what, should we get her on the ambulance? It's a bit quieter. And we can check her over there. Yeah. And then we'll go from there. So we walk in to find her sat up breathing, talking to us. It was an initial sigh of relief. And then as mum started to talk to us and explain her conditions, that relief started to sort of creep back a bit. Because we knew that she had got the potential to crash quite quickly. 
croup is a common childhood illness that affects the airways. But Maya's chromosome abnormality makes it much more dangerous for her. Let's get you made to just. A strider is the harsh wheezing or croaking sound that can be a warning sign of a life threatening airway obstruction. So, for the last seven months, she's. Can you pop Jessie, a finger in there? Jessica You're used to this, no aren't you? Her, when was the last time she had a serious flare up? Uh, Seven weeks ago now. Seven weeks ago. Checked the oxygen in the house, oxygen in the ambulance. Okay. Can I check your temperature? Is that okay? You're probably she fed up with all that? this, aren't you? Well, so you can look out. Yeah, that might be easier, yeah? So you can really see the outside world. Sorted 37.2. <coughs> right here. Yeah. You okay? Are you going to be sick? Well, I hope you see. Oh, dear. Do you think I can have a look at your throat? Would that be okay? Hang on, let me get a torch. And a stick, let's have a look at this. Can you say, ah? Oh, that's a big mouth, isn't it? Can I pop your tongue down? Open wide, nice and wide. Sorry, it doesn't feel very nice. Um, it? Stick your tongue out for me as well. Conscious that Maya will need specialist treatment, her mum, Keela, has requested she's taken to Birmingham Children's Hospital. Um, this patient is um, normally treated at the children's. Um, she has quite complex health issues. We still have to take her to the children's rather than um, to come out to Russell's for her to be transferred later. Yeah, that's fine. Come back to the children's, please. Thank you very much, mate. Julio, to children. Indeed. Jamie, yes, mate. Jamie knows this is an all too familiar journey for Maya. Do you like elephants, Maya? Yeah. Hang on then. Fucking tight. I always, always find the tying them is the most difficult part. Again? <coughs> Look at that! Can I hold him? If you can earn a kid's trust to make them sort of relax with you, it makes the job ten times easier. I used to make chickens and I got bored of making chickens and the only other easy one was an elephant. So that's, that's now my go-to animal for glove animals. <coughs> You're one of a kind, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. No point being the same as everybody else, it's boring. <coughs> oh, squeeze past. As Maya is already under the care of specialists at the children's hospital, staff will know exactly what to do to quickly ease her breathing. Have a run down. Go see the nice nurses. They're nicer than we are. Maya, she, uh, bless her, someone uh, so young, she's not very well, is she? She's got a lot going on, bless her, for someone that's only six. I know, yeah. A lot to contend with, isn't it, for mm. a six-year-old? I mean, her mum was saying she's unwell every, what was she saying, every sort of six to eight weeks, yeah. she, has, she ends up with croup. Um, it's amazing, though, Mum said sure how quickly it can develop from croup to quite a serious well, story. yeah, mum, and... mum said she can end up in mm. quite bad respiratory distress, really, can't she? You've sort of like an hour, which is, which to go from nothing to that in an hour is quite a scary experience. It is, surely. yeah, definitely, for a six-year-old. She appreciated the elephant, and that's all that really counts. Hey, you made her an elephant. Yeah. I think I've worked out why I don't have children yet. Lack of maternal instinct. <laughs> do you know what? I genuinely love kids. I really do. You're the do. sort of person who likes kids to give them back. Yeah. I think.
think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Every time an ambulance passes us and we're in the car, he's like, Dad, is that your ambulance? So he goes to nursery and it's all about Daddy's ambulance. So he always, he's got a plentiful supply of ambulances at home, which you bring. Yeah. So to mine, he brought a carrier bag which had a digger and four ambulances or something. Four ambulances? Yeah, something. Expecting a major incident. Well, I'll see you in the morning. You'll be a good, good, good boy. Bye. Well, don't you laugh at me. Just because I can't remember which kid is which. <laughs> Paramedics Gaz Clark and Liam Dale are working a night shift. They've just come off their break. How was your dinner? Absolutely lovely, to be honest. Was it? Yeah, spaghetti bolognese, very nice. Just enough as well. To feel content without being full, kind of thing. That's how I feel, I ate a full quiche. Cheese and bacon quiche. Cheese and bacon. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> that one we call quiche. Did you eat the foil as well? Might as well have done. <laughs> a new job has come through. We're going to Iris, 92-year-old. Call from a doctor or personal responsible. Unitary dread retention. Oh, yeah, it's this one. Hello. Hiya. An ambulance has been called for. 92-year-old Iris lives with her husband, Ronald, their daughter, Kate, and their two grandchildren. Mom. I'm Gary, Liam's just coming up. So has the doctor actually been out? Yes. All right. The doctor came and wrote this letter, and the doctor yeah, yeah. phoned right. for you. She was discharged from hospital on Monday night, and this is the discharge letter. Lovely. Last week, Iris was in hospital with a fractured pelvis. Worried about her mother's health this evening, Kate called Iris's GP, who suspected a urinary infection, and called 111 on the family's behalf. Will you lie there till the Yeah, we've got, to, we've got to do some checks on you first anyway and that. Check. Yes. The doctor's been out to see you. Check. Yeah. Check. Do your blood pressure. Oh, blood pressure. Yeah, do your blood pressure. Put some sticky dots on your wrists and your ankles yeah. to check out the old ticker. Just normal routine okay. stuff. Oh, I see. Now, you've been having problems weeing. Have I? According to the doctor, you have. The doctor who came out to see you. Yeah. You can't yeah. wait, can you? You can't wait properly. So we need to do our little few checks first, and then we need to get you out to the ambulance, get you up the hospital, so they can sort it all out. OK? <laughs> Sounds ridiculous to me. Well, sometimes it is, but if the doctor says it's the best place for you to go, then we do what he's told, don't we? Yeah? I, love, I like to stop. I know, but you can't. If you can't we, we well, need to get it sorted. I can, well. You haven't no. since 8 o'clock this morning. So has she been treated for UTI? Gaz and Liam know that a stubborn urinary tract infection alongside dementia will only add to Iris's confusion. <sighs> well, how are you feeling? You OK? Yeah, I'm all right, look. Lovely. I've got my mum and dad and that's all that matters. That's all that matters, isn't it? So, can I pop this blood pressure cuff on your arm? Yeah. All right, thank you very much. I like to be here with the family. Yeah. I think I'd prefer it that way as well. Don't throw me away, will you? That's fine. I'll try not no, to. No, 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 there's no need to. We need to get some of these... Uh, Bedding off because you have got a temperature, because you've got an infection, yeah, and being wrapped up in the bed is only going to make you feel worse. So I'm not all yeah. that bad. No. No. I think you're doing all right. I'm, I'm the best in the family anyway. Are you? Yeah. Your blood pressure's really good. Yes. Get this one off, yeah. I'll do it abroad until I was only a youngster. 
Ah, there's the Lindia River. In India? India, India, Egypt. Whereabouts in India? Bangalore. 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 Yeah. My father was in the army. He was a sergeant. OK. So the temp was 37.4 and the BM was 7.5. I've got my mum and my dad and my brother. Haven't I? You haven't. Oh? They're all dead. Are they all dead? Yes. Have they all died? All died. Oh, God. I loved them, though. Yeah. Confusion is a common symptom of urinary tract infections in older people. Patients like Iris, who already have dementia, are particularly vulnerable. What have I got the ambulance for? Because you've got to go to hospital, because you can't wee at the moment. I can't wee at the moment? No. I feel quite comfortable right now. I know, but you've got to come to hospital with us. The doctor's told us he needs to see you. It's just for a checkup. So Iris was quite confused as to why we were there and dragging her out of her comfy bed where she was all tucked up. But it was quite important that we got her to hospital. And she hadn't been able to urinate all that morning. So the infection's just being kept inside her body, progressively getting worse. Where's the pain at the moment? Right at the bottom of the back. Right. Do you want to lie back down a bit? Is that going to make it easier? It might do. Lay back a bit. Right. I'm going to start to lie you back. Just relax into the bed. You've got to tell me when to stop, when you're nice and relaxed back. I'm relaxed. That's enough? Yeah. Right. As they set off on the short journey to hospital, Iris's confusion is growing. Am I all right then? Yeah, you will be in a bit, love. In a bit, what do you mean? We need a blood test. Where's my brother? Mum, he's been dead. It's 20 years. My hey, brother? Dennis, yeah. I haven't got anybody then, have I? You've got me. But you, what? Are you my sister? I'm your daughter. Oh, you? And you've got a husband, right? Ron, yes. He's a good husband. Yeah. You've got a son-in-law, Peter. Peter. And a granddaughter, Georgina. Yeah. And a grandson, Stephen. Oh, I don't do too bad then. No, you're not doing too bad then. At least you came home for a birthday, didn't you, yesterday? Your birthday. Oh, Ooh. yeah. It was yesterday, your birthday. Got any oh, cake left? That's a birthday cake. It's a huge cake. Yeah. How old are you? Ninety-two. Ninety-two. Yeah. Good God. Hopefully, the doctors in A and E will be able to get Iris's urinary problems swiftly under control. A few little bumps, Pat. We'll try and make it as smooth as possible. Lovely family. Daughters are the wits in there. It really is. Make it even worse, it's not just mum being in pain and feeling helpless and everything. You know mum's dementia is not even recognising her daughter some of the time. That must be so Yeah, it's hurtful. horrible, isn't it? As they say, dementia, it's a cruel disease. The worst, I think. Yeah, and it tends to affect the family worse, doesn't it? I bought some new socks for work because you have to have thick socks if you're in these oh, yeah. boots. Oh, yeah. They're superhero ones, but they're thick socks. Mm. They're amazing. Captain America. Captain America? Yeah, man. I'd get Batman ones, I would. Oh, no. Can't beat Captain America. No, Batman is, is, is key. That is my favourite superhero person ever. Don't know why, I just, I just like him because of the fact that he, yeah, anyone can really be Batman if you've got enough money, really. So you just need to be a multi-millionaire to be Batman? I, I don't think I'd stand a chance, do I? No. No, mate. Right.
It's mid-afternoon and paramedics Chris Irvine and Aaron Campbell have just received a new job. Oh, what's this? RTC. Road blocked. RTC. Two vehicles, one patient with lower back pain, one patient with bloody lip. Chest pain. Police on route at the moment. Chris joined the West Midlands Ambulance Service four years ago. He and crewmate Aaron are both from Northern Ireland. I have to have nerves of steel with driving all the time, don't you? Hi. <laughs> Some of the stuff people do, proper shakes me up. Uh, you know when they pull on the footpath, but they're still doing 40 miles an hour? Uh, this looks like it might be the backup from our accident here. Where's this, uh, this RTC? I don't see it. That looks like an RTC there, maybe. There's no car. Well, it was that one, like, but... Where's the other car? The crew aren't sure who needs them and why. Are we here for you guys? What's happened? Where have they gone? Have they left? Yeah, so who was in this car? It's me and... Him. Yeah, he's all right. 29-year-old Siobhan was driving, and his friend, 21-year-old Arlington, was a passenger. You hurt anywhere? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just my, my, my chest here and it's hurting me. Yeah, yeah. Literally, one guy was coming up the road, one guy was coming across the... Um, the yeah, yeah. Crossing and I've stopped. You stopped and he hasn't? He hasn't. Well, you didn't see, can you see? Yeah, yeah. See, I don't know what speed he was doing. How hard do you reckon he hit you? Like, hit you hard enough yeah, that you were man. throwing about or what? Yeah, or? yeah. yeah man. I found that from Jeff Lowe. Yeah, what's just looked inside it. Yeah. Right, shall we get you on? Because yeah. you're the one that seems like you're I'm sore. My back, my back here. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. This is burning, bro, for some reason, man. Just here. All right, up on, and we'll have a look at you. The other driver left soon after the crash. Did you get a registration or anything yeah, off him? Did you? Oh, you got a picture of him. Oh, fantastic. Smashing. What did he say? Did he just up and leave? Or? Literally, he came out and go, oh, bro, I'm sorry. Just relax your arm for us, dude. You know what I'm saying? And then he's like, oh, um, just take my number and call me in half an hour to get my insurance. Because I was like, yo, you got insurance in that? In half an hour? It's a hired weird, car, isn't it? Nah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Irish car, right. That's why. Just leave, leave the scene of an accident, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, legal, like were you stopped at the crossing or did you just hit you when you're driving? Uh, you were stopped? I stopped at the crossing, innit? I was yeah. stopped because someone was crossing. Yeah. Crossing. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And he's just yeah. like, yeah. boom! Back on me. Yeah. Obviously, an accident um, for anyone is a shock. The adrenaline is running high, so you, you can't have um, injuries that you don't know you have. So it was important for us to take, take that into account and uh, give them a, a good assessment. Do me a favour, lean forward for me and give yourself a hug. That's it. I know that sounds a bit strange. It's just to flex your muscles, that's all. There's no pain where I'm touching now. Yeah, no pain right there, man. Right here? Yeah, yeah. yeah where I'm touching now, where my fingers are. The one this, this here, just real tense. Man. Yeah, so that there, that big muscle there, yeah? Yeah. yeah. OK. And this is my chest now, that's what I can feel. Yeah. Right here. Here? Well, that's yeah. tense, to be fair. What, is there anything like... Anything, anything right, right where my finger is? Not, not right here, but... Okay. You don't feel normal, you don't feel like that. Uh, it's just... Um, I did that in my chest. What that is, is the seatbelt doing its work. Um, doesn't do anything, anything good for your chest, but it stops you going through the windscreen. You know, bruised ribs for a few, for a few weeks is better than them. Having your head taken off by laminated the glass, isn't it? All good, mate, all good. Perfectly healthy. Before they go, Aaron wants to be sure Arlington has also come through unscathed. Yeah, I'll just put your finger in there for us, dude. Do you do lots of sports and stuff? I used to bike to work. Used to bike. Yeah. Your heart rate's, yeah, your heart's, heart's quite healthy. You get anywhere, any pain anywhere apart from your lip? Not really. So have you done the same thing, gone like that and bit your lip? Uh, my phone hit, hit my lip. Your phone hit your lip? <laughs> <laughs> um, you got a little bit of a cut. There's nothing we need to do about it. Other than that, you're all good. 
Right, man, if you're happy, you can shoot off. Yeah. Thank you, that one. Oh, well, it's, it's nice to meet you, anyway. Satisfied they've both escaped serious injury, Aaron and Chris send them on their way. If you're other lad, they just leave on scene, like, you know what I mean? Just come up, at them, right. and then just clear off. Ah, oh, call me in half an hour, and it's, you know what I mean? Nah, he's gone. Yeah. He's gone. I know something that'll make you feel a bit better. I don't want to know, do I? Yeah, you do. How come? When people, when, when I drink alcohol, people say I'm an alcoholic. But when I drink Fanta, they don't say I'm fantastic. <laughs> <Video. laughs> Medic Tina Spittle and technician Donna Parcell are regular crewmates. Bloated myself up there. <laughs> You're gonna have the burps. Yeah. A bit windy, me. We're going burp. <laughs> So we are going to a 50-year-old male with a query asthma attack. Shortness yeah. of breath. Let's put some twinkles on. <coughs> Sudden onset of breathing problems. Oh, possible anaphylaxis. Speed is of the essence. Anaphylaxis is a severe and extreme allergic reaction. Is it for you? Am I right to pop this on here? Yeah, yeah, I do. Lovely. What's happened then? I can't breathe. You can't breathe? How yeah. long have you been like this for? This morning. Since this morning? Yeah. Right, okay, okay. It's got worse, you know what I mean? Right, so are you asthmatic? No. Is that all right? I think I've got COPD. COPD. Oh, okay. Have you taken. I've got any oxygen for me, please. I'm going to try and sort that out for you now. Let's just get you on here first. Okay. It's not the first time Donna and Tina's patient, Giuseppe, has had to call an ambulance for his breathing. Any other medical problems? No. I'm just going to have a quick listen to your chest and see if I can give you a neb. Yeah, he's really reduced throughout. Can't really hear a lot at all going in. Okay. Okay, we'll pop you on a nebulizer, okay? Just nice, normal breathing for us if you can. Try and slow that breathing down. COPD stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. Sadly, there's no cure for COPD. We just have to manage his symptoms. So the important thing here was to calm Giuseppe down and regulate his breathing. Did you wake up and feel quite unwell? No, I've been awake. Yeah. Short of breath. Yeah. And then okay. a couple of movements and my breath just went. OK. And you've gone from there? Yeah. So I'm just checking you smoking now. Yeah, there we go, we are smoking now. Lovely. Oh, oh no, I was meaning smoking the, the yeah, this was this. smoking, that's what I was meaning. Yeah, Not smoking smoking. Yeah, is... You've even tried yeah. doing that. Yeah. How long have you been diagnosed with COPD? Well, I've been diagnosed yeah, a couple of years. You seem a bit more relaxed than when we first came in. So maybe it's starting to do something. Your oxygen levels are really good. Okay, your heart rate's up a bit. It's settled down, it's settling down a bit. That's good. But, but if I, see if I start moving about again. Yeah, <coughs> it will, well, yeah. Unfortunately. Right. Yep. Yeah. The smallest amount of effort and you just go. Is that because I'm in, I've got any breath in things? 
There's a chance. Yeah, so you haven't got a temperature, but you look like you've got like the trembling. You've got yeah. goosebumps. She's working hard. And COPD flares up for no reason. The weather's not great at the moment for people with breathing issues. What are you going to do with me, girls? I think it's going to have to be a trip up, isn't it? Well, see what they say. Cause, yeah, because we you can't need some fix you here, can we? Yeah. So it might be that you need some steroids just to help you in the short term. It might be that you do have an infection and you need antibiotics, but that will be confirmed with chest x-rays and things like that, yeah. which we can't do here. But they can do it up there, yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, we're not in the habit of dragging people to hospital if they don't need to go. Yeah, but I need, I think I You need, need to, to go. Yeah. 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 yeah, you know it, don't you? Okay. Yeah. Morning, it's lovely, it isn't it? Got a toasty. If yep. you can, go on to there for me. When you're ready, take your time, watch your breathing. Okay, bring your legs up for me. Okay, we'll get this one finished. And there we are. So, over the last couple of days, did you say you've had you've been coughing up some phlegm? Yeah. Have you been a little bit unwell? Yeah, my breathing, I've been, I've been hundred percent. You know what I mean? My breathing. Over the last few days. It's been bearable. Yeah. When it is, when it is, when I get when I get out of breath. Yeah. Sometimes my breath comes back to me. Yeah. But Sometimes this is, it doesn't. doesn't. You know what I mean? And today, oh, it, was, it wasn't coming back. Wasn't, uh, <laughs> so, would you say this has been going on for three days? Which has been going on for 12 months, but. <laughs> <laughs> now, the way you're on Yeah. 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 With the medication taking effect, Giuseppe's symptoms are easing. What do you do as a job? As a job? Oh, um, I used to be a carpenter. Okay. I used to be a wind and that, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. because of my health now, I have to look for um, light assembly. Yes. You yeah. know what I mean? But the carpentry, that doesn't help with the dust. Well, yeah. And the wood, and then the smoking. I have to look oh, for light, to... light assembly yeah. duties, you know what I mean? Yeah, OK. Because of my health. Giuseppe can now be seen by a respiratory specialist for further treatment. Got that, got everything we need. All right, good. Got oh, got that hood up. You don't want anybody to see you. Well, okay, uh, <laughs> I don't mind that. It's, <laughs> it's freezing. At least it's not raining at the moment, is it? Like just. When he was, when he was panicking, wasn't he? Because well, which anybody right? He's a bit of a be. panicker. Which, when you can't breathe, that's a justifiable reason I think to I'd be panic. Exactly I think I'd be honest. the same. So a bit of panicking, um, and a bit of obviously he's, he's got COPD. A bit of reassurance, he was fine there, wasn't he? Yeah, so. and he probably just needs a, a course of steroids just to help him get through it all at the beginning. When I was working in Birmingham, um, a couple of times been to Cadbury World. Oh, yeah. And if you go to a member of the public in the public areas, afterwards they tend to give you a, a goodie bag with uh, various chocolates in. So you always used to try and jump on the chance to go to the job at Cadbury World. And the one time we went to a worker there, actually in the factory on the shop floor, and we literally stand in there and we've got bars of chocolate going past us on conveyor belts. And because we went out to one of the workers, we didn't get anything. Oh. I could have just helped myself off the conveyor belt. Yeah, nice and warm still. Yeah. Open up the bag and leave them there, like lean your arm on the conveyor so it shoots them all off. Yeah.
In Willenhall, paramedic Adam Hipkiss and technician Alex Temink are working the day shift. How many pets you got again? Four dogs, a cat that adopted us. I've got two horses, the kids have got a pony. Yeah, that's it. It's enough. <laughs> a fair few then. Yeah. Before joining the ambulance service, animal lover Alex was a stunt horse rider in the movies. But the horses have earned their keep over the years. They've just enjoying their retirement now. We are off to cardiac chest pain. A 28-year-old man has suffered chest pains outside a school. Hello. The patient alerted school staff, who called 999 straight away. <laughs> this is Jonathan Bird. Hi, Jonathan. I'm Alex. This is Adam. So what's happening? He's got chest pain. Yep. Breathing difficulty. Can I just have a little feel of your wrist there? Right, where's the pain? The chest. Right in the middle. What sort of pain is it? Crushing Have you ever had it before? Right. But did you go and see anyone about it, I mean? Yeah. And what did they say it was? Yeah. They didn't. Thank you, Alex. You haven't got any heart conditions that you know about? No history of any kind of cardiac problems? OK. Jonathan was 28, which is uh, young to be complaining of cardiac chest pain. However, uh, he was um, describing crushing chest pain, which is quite often a term that people use when they are having um, cardiac issues. Single dad Jonathan was on his way to collect his son Cody, the oldest of his three children, when the pain began. How old's your lad? Daddy. You all right? Hello. You all right, mate? There you go. You have a seat down there. How long ago did it start? About an hour ago. OK. To work out whether Jonathan might be having a heart attack, Alex and Adam need to monitor his heart activity. I'm going to need to shave you. All right. And is it something you can point to, or is it just a general area across the middle? Just across the chest. OK. Yeah. Nice and stuff, as the crew carry out their checks, a worried friend tries to get in touch. My dad can't talk, he's in the ambulance. Yeah, he's OK. He's just outside of my school in an ambulance. Cody's teacher, Tim, also wants to check on Jonathan. Hi. Daddy will call you back later. Just trying. OK? Yeah, he's OK. Sir, a bit irregular. Zip it up. Oh. Mm, all right. It's jumping out. All right. It sounds muscular. More so than anything. We'll have a listen to your chest. All right. We'll go from there, really. I'll listen to your lungs and then I'll have a little closer listen to your heart, all right? Just nice deep breaths in and out. The heart trace hasn't revealed any major problems, but Jonathan's chest pain means a trip to hospital is still necessary. Hold on, Dudley. The paramedic wants you. Hold on. What's your oh, yeah, date of birth? Adam on the paramedic for the ambulance See, service. You're right. Adam. With chest pain, we always we always say to go into a blood test. But his ECG looks fine. All his observations are normal. All right then. No worries. Hi. Hey. Hey, well, Can you see the lights, little man? Yeah. Come on then. I'll come and show you. Right, can you see the button that's got nine, nine, mo nine mode on there? Yeah. Press it. Now, if you jump down here. Can you turn the lights on? 
You can see it this side. Cody will be looked after at school until his grandmother can collect him. Let me know when you're ready, dude. Okay, all good, thank you. Sorry, I just needed seat belts. Do you feel sick at all with it? Okay, so no dizziness, no blurred vision. Apart from this kind of chest pain that you've got at the minute, you've got no other new pains or anything? No, just like tingling. Pain, yeah. Like my lips. And I just pain the shoulder. Which shoulder? My left shoulder, my neck. During the 20 minute drive to hospital, Jonathan's symptoms seem to be subsiding. There we go, just pulling in now. All right, a couple of bumps. Now doctors can run tests to determine what's causing his chest pain. Six-year-old Maya spent an hour in the children's hospital where she was given medication to help ease her croup. She recovered quickly this time, but continues to suffer frequent respiratory infections. 92-year-old Iris was admitted to hospital where she had a catheter fitted. Unfortunately, she developed infections which kept her in for six weeks. She and Ronald celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary on the ward. Giuseppe, who was struggling with his breathing, was given oxygen in hospital and discharged a few hours later. His breathing's improved since the weather's warmed up. Jonathan was sent home with painkillers after an hour in A&E. Doctors are yet to diagnose the problem, and he's booked in for a CT scan. He hasn't had any episodes of chest pain since. It's a tough life, isn't it, really? Life with the ambulance, man. It's a fun life, man. It's a fun life. 